Just wanted to do another video bleeding the cooling system, you know, just trying to keep it simple, but as things are at the moment, this isn't really bleeding the cooling system because the coolant level's down to there and the B line is there and it needs to be above the B line so that it runs out that tube at the other side around there into the other side of the radiator and the cooling system. So keep watching and I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like. It can be difficult and you do need to be able to pour it slowly. So this is a full bottle of coolant so you have to forgive us if uh, we miss but if we do we're going to get sprayed in coolant probably so we don't want that. So the pressure's on my assistant to keep that coolant going in the hole at a steady rate. And as you're holding the bottle for a long time, sometimes you get a sore arm. <laughs> but uh, if you make a mess, mate, not good, because then we have to clean this engine bay again. So what's happening, guys? Keeping it above water. How can we keep pouring and still filling up? How is that? This is running through that hose there, through that other side tank of the radiator, into that radiator hose, and down into the engine. Right, right. This side, that tank's full, but it goes down to the bottom and the thermostat shut. So we're going to keep going like this. We've just started the engine. We're just going to keep going and going and going. When it stops going in, that probably means we've got too much and we might have to take some out. This is the system to bleed it properly. The level, you can see the levels down there. The full level is about there, the low level is about there. I like it about the, the seam, I'm happy with the seam. If you put too much in, this of course will blow it out. That's why there's a set level, because when it gets really hot, it's going to push any excess out. It can get a little bit messy. Now on this one we've had the water pump off, changed the water pump, you know, the big front engine job. And I just thought I'd tell you how many litres of coolant it's going to take. Because people like to go to the books and stuff, and books say things like 12 litres. But I can tell you now, mate, have you ever seen one of these take 12 litres? Have you ever needed to crack a third bolt? Because I haven't. No, it's in the modern R, mate. It's, it's less than 10 litres. We were just doing 8, 9, 10 litres, somewhere there. 8, 9, 10, about 8, yeah. Right, so you can still see going, right? So this could be the shortest video ever. But I like to stick around because you might see what's going to happen. You know, let's just see what happens. I'll give you more information. pumps 
can park wherever you like, but if you want to get the kit off me, we call it the BFB kit. We've got some videos on that. How much is going inside on that? Eight litres. Uh, we're already just over eight litres. Could be a little bit more to go, but I reckon we're close. I reckon let's risk wasting a little bit for a bit more in. Because you could just go, look, I'm happy to say that you're not going to cook an engine driving it with taken at least eight litres of coolant because any we put in there we could be wasting. Let's just see what happens. Yes, I like to take it for a drive. That gets it all fully warmed up. Thermostat opening closing a number of times. So proper engine revs and uh, full operating temp. Bring it back, park it. It'll all settle down a bit. So once you get to the point there, it stays above the B line. You could probably quit putting more in. Getting close to that. That's why that cap in the back of the picture there comes off on the top of the radio. So when the coolant goes in that tube there, instead of getting a bit of a lock and splashing everywhere, as the coolant goes in, the air comes backwards out this hole. Right? This is the one I'm talking about around here. Right on the, this is the highlights on the Prado, it's on top of this white tank. that thermostat opens, this will drop down a bit. Just because there's a little bit of air in the top of the tank, I'm not too worried because it's going to flow and it's all going to end up coming into this tank. The key is that you get the coolant in there initially, so what are we now, about eight and a half litres in? About eight and a half on this one, so there's the statistics guys, that's what it is. I don't care what the book says, I can tell you what we're pouring into the engine. That's with the water pump coming in. And staying above the B line, off that sun, see that? So if you put any more in, it would be a waste of coolant. And maybe there's about half a litre there wasted, maybe not. That's what I'm saying, it takes about eight litres. So what we're going to do now is, I'm not going to bore you any longer. I might come back to you with a conclusion or a little bit more info. If I keep talking, well, this information, this experience, trying to help you here. So what we're going to do now is, we'll put the cap on, both of those after it gets the full operating temp, so not yet, but once it gets to 83 degrees, the caps can go on, then we're gonna take it for a drive, we're gonna come back, we're gonna let it sit for 20 minutes, half an hour, then we'll take this cap off carefully, be aware of the pressure, because the pressure there, you could burn yourself, not likely these systems are pretty good, pretty safe to work on, but that being said, be careful, always take the cap off the way I said you don't, angle it away from you so that if something's like happened it's going to spray the other way. Use it like a, to reflect it away from you, if you know what I mean. So we're going to go for a drive then we'll come back and uh, have a look where it is and check it once it's cooled down. Okay, so we're just taking it for about a 10 minute drive. It's definitely up to full operating temperature. You can see the level is up to the B line. You've even got the B line around this side. You know, I was around there before, whatever. B here, B there, I can't remember, is there one around here as well? No, just the two, like two's not enough. So what we're gonna do now is, obviously everything's, all the air's gonna be pretty well pushed to the top from the driving. Um, so we're gonna let it cool down because obviously with a hot engine, uh, it could be under pressure. So the way to tell that is to give the hose, it's not too bad actually, you could take the cap off, but there's no need to, right? So I'm just gonna wait, let that cool down. The pressure will reduce, it won't take long. And then once it's cooled down, we'll just carefully crack this loose and gently open that up. Like I said, I'm not going to do it at the moment because we don't want to make any mess. Okay, so for us, this job's pretty much complete other than some final checks. So about the water around, we just gave the car a bit of a wash because we guarantee the vehicle's going to come back to you a lot cleaner. Not just cleaner, a lot cleaner than what it came to us. Just going to have a final inspection and part of that is we're doing the final coolant inspection. So now it's all cooled down. See, no pressure, no pressure, and it's over full. So there's two things you can do there. You can leave it in there, it'll blow itself out. It's not gonna do any harm, right? Or you can put a syringe in and suck a little bit out, which is something we may do. But because I've got the car for a couple more days, what I'm going to do is drive it again, because I like to do a good long road test, especially after we've done major works. We've done injector replacement job, the BFE, you know, the big front engine, whole heap of work's been done here. And one of the best things that's ever going to show up any issues is some good long run testing. So we're going to do a good 20Ks or something. So right now I'm about to take it for another drive. That's the next thing that's going to happen. 
So it's been for a short drive to we'll do a quick inspection. Don't worry about the water, that's just dripped off through the intercooler because as I said, just gave the car a quick wash. Um, we're just going to do a quick inspection. Everything looks good. Then we'll go for a longer drive. We'll call it the final drive and we will do the final inspection. Anyway, hopefully that covers for you about bleeding the cooling system. Hope you understand that a bit better. If that's the case, please remember to give us the thumbs up and subscribe, turn the bell on so you're not missing out on the next important bit of information. Thanks.